Hi, let's take a look at the ESP8266, a very cool little uh, Wi-Fi module chip that allows you to basically add Wi-Fi into any project you've got for like a couple of bucks. Fantastic, so let's take a look at it. Not only can you add it for a couple of bucks, but it also now has uh, Arduino integration, so you can actually program this thing, which is not an Arduino, but you can program it with the Arduino IDE, and it's really incredibly simple to do. So let's take a look at it. Because there's actually three different things going on here. One is the actual chip, which is under this metal thing here, and that's made by a company called Expressive, and then, there are these modules here, um, which is the black uh, module with the castellations on there, soldered onto a baseboard, which is the third thing over here. In this case, it's a Wemos D1 Mini. So there's three different things going on here. So for the first part of this is the actual ESP8266 chip itself, and that's made by a company called Expressive. And yes, you can just buy the chip and integrate that into your product but you know a lot of people don't do that because they're so cheap as i'll show in a minute um and the module based things it's just easier to use the uh, modules but if you're saving you know penny pinching saving every cent integrating a real high quality product you could just use the uh, wi-fi chip itself but then you've got to add the external antenna and a couple of external parts there it says it there minimum is seven external components and basically it uses a 32-bit uh tensilia uh, control micro in it. It's a 16-bit risk processor. It runs a real-time OS. It's got a Wi-Fi stack and all that stuff to make it uh, work. It's got low power management, although Wi-Fi is not hugely low power, so if you can't like run it from a coin cell, uh, for example, that's why you'd like something like that. You'd, you'd use uh, BLE, the low power uh, Bluetooth. And so it, it's basically the chip in there, and we won't take a look at the data sheet and everything else. So if we have a look at the Wikipedia page for the 8266, you'll see that it comes uh, generally on these little modules like this. And if we have a look at these, these are actually uh, manufactured. These modules are manufactured by a third-party company called AI Thinker and there's generally different ones and these are, are the most prevalent ones available everyone seems to be using these what we're gonna uh, the one we're gonna look at today uses the ESP 12F uh, or 12S and it's got 4 meg of flash memory in there I think it's 64k of RAM and you can run applications on this process you don't need any other external micro or anything so it's more than just a Wi-Fi interface you can actually run applications and programs on this chip, on this module. It's fantastic. So the next level out from that is people take these companies take these AI thinker modules and then they add them onto more usable uh, boards because uh, the the castellation ones are great if you want to, uh, the castellations are the small little uh, cutouts, circular uh, half hole cutouts on the side that allow you to uh, surface mount it onto your own board. Great for a high volume product, not so good for like one off stuff and things like that. So third party companies make these boards uh, that, you know, Artifruit do a Hazar and Olimex do one and there's you know a whole bunch of them. The one we're going to look at today is the Wemos D1 Mini. The they sell a couple of different ones, but it basically takes the ESP 12S module uh, there and it uh, puts it on a more usable board with the pins because this chip has the 8266 has. Uh, up to 16 I.O. pins and it's got UARTs and ADC interfaces and all sorts of stuff. Um, so it just basically breaks these out. So this is a three level solution that we're playing with here. And this is only like five or six dollars for the Wemos uh, board. I got it for like on eBay for nine bucks Australian from an Australian supplier delivered. <sighs> Interestingly, I think my seller actually gave me a dodgy, like a fake one, because it hasn't got the rounded corners, it hasn't actually got Wemos written on it, although that's what it was advertised as, so I think I actually got a fake one. So, oops. Um, anyway, we're going to use the Wemos D1 Mini in our example today, but just be aware that the ESP8266 could be up to a three-level solution like this. The chip, the module, and then the board. Choose which one suits your purpose.
and these things are insanely cheap. Look at this, AliExpress uh, for like a module-based uh, one that we've got here. 17 bucks for 10, a dollar 70 each. Or you can just buy like the um, AI Thinker module itself, the ESP 12S that we're looking at here, or the 12F, uh, for 18 dollars for 10, a dollar 80 each. Just like you can probably even get them cheaper than that. You know, imagine what they, you know, get them cheaper in volume if you're manufacturing 10,000 items or something. It's just nuts. And the Wemos module we're looking at here comes in the Pro version, the Mini and the Lite. We just happen to have the Mini. They've got little display shields and all sorts of, you know, all sorts of variants on this. Uh, so if we go in and have a look at the uh, Wemos D1 Mini, four US dollars from Wemos on AliExpress. Um, <laughs> four bucks. Insane. And you've got to remember, this is four bucks for a module. That's not just a Wi-Fi module. It's a complete processor with ADCs, I/O, and everything. You can run applications on this. It's got four mega flash memory, like 64k of RAM or whatever it is, and just amazing. This is a complete solution for a Wi-Fi product. You just hook sensors up to it and a battery, and bam, done. So, how do we program this wonderful little widget? I'm glad you asked. Uh, Expressive have released various uh, SDKs over the years and various, there's various tool chains, GCC and all that sort of stuff. And you can get a basic version and Z basic and all sorts of stuff. But by far, I think the probably the easiest way for any beginner to get involved with this is to use the Arduino environment. So you can actually uh, get an Arduino plugin for this that allows you to use the Arduino IDE. No, it's not an Arduino compatible board. It doesn't use the Atmel processor. With, like Nothing to do with it. They're just using the Arduino IDE and everything to make it easy. And I'll show you how easy it actually is. So what you want to do is go to the GitHub repository for the ESP8266 Arduino uh, environment. And uh, so hats off to uh, the people who have written, personal people who have written this and are involved in this project because it's absolutely uh, fantastic. It doesn't have names there, does it? But uh, yeah, hats off to everyone involved in this because you'll see it's just great. So what we'll do is we'll simply download this and we'll download this as a zip. So we'll just download that zip. It's not particularly big and we've got Arduino master zip there it is it's downloading done so what this is going to let us do is run uh, Arduino sketches on this actual module so your regular Arduino environment that you're used to uh, when you go in here and go to boards like this after we install this we'll see it pop up as a board so just like any other board that will work with the Arduino environment okay so what we have to do is go into our Arduino environment here I've got the latest one 1.8.2 uh, I'm not sure which version uh, has previously supported it but hey, this one is going to work. So you'll notice that we don't have anything in here like this. So what we need to do is go into File, Preferences here, and you'll notice that there's an additional Boards Manager URL. And we just copy and paste this uh, one from over here. There it is, uh, .json, Arduino, ESP8266, etc. We cut and paste that one in there. And if you've already got multiple boards installed, you just separate them with a uh, comma like that. So we should be ready to additional board manager URL done so now we simply go into tools and we go into a board manager over here and it's downloading downloading because it now has that uh, new address that we've got and bingo these are all our additional boards Arduino Sam Arduino and NRF 52 Intel i586 boards by Intel they've added added Intel Curie board all this sort of stuff so all these weird and wonderful boards that are uh, Windows 10 IoT core and all that sort of stuff a lot of big name uh, companies like Intel and uh, Microsoft and that have gotten onto um, this Arduino thing and produce boards that are compatible with the Arduino environment. And here it is. It's automatically um, listed this because we've put in that address uh, where it can get the information from. ESP8266 community. We just want to install that. So click on install. It'll download all of the requisite stuff. And you can see that this actually includes support for the Artifruit Hazar and all sorts of boards, Node MCU and uh, the Wemos uh, boards. So there might be other boards out there that are not 
uh, particularly supported by this. They may still work in some way. I'm not uh, entirely sure. I haven't tried them, but this one definitely supports our Wemos uh, board or any of the other ones listed here. No worries. Now we've got an extra 153 meg to download. Ah, modern software. Anyway, it works. The amount of capability you get, you're damn right I'm going to download 153 <laughs> meg. No worries. Now installed, let's go check it out. So we'll close that down and we go into tools and we go into board and bingo. There we have it. ESP8266 modules, all the uh, different uh, supported ones, including our Wemos D1 and R1 Mini. Awesome. Too easy. But there's more. One of the great things about this, not only have we installed our board in there, so it has all the support for it, but it's also automatically installed all of the examples. So what do we want? Of course, we want a blinky. There you go. Let's give it a go. And there's our example code. Oh, too easy. But of course, this doesn't mean diddly squat unless we program our board. So let's plug it in. This is plugging in for the uh, first time. And of course, it's got all the uh, USB to uh, serial driver on the back and everything else. And it's installing my device driver. Here we go. Searching, searching USB to serial. It'll eventually pop up. Bingo. We're in like Flynn, ready to use on COM11. And we'll uh, choose our COM port. Here it is. COM11. So we'll choose that. And... We're ready to go, are we? Yep, we don't need to open the serial port. We should just be able to uh, compile this and run and upload. So we've got our board set to the Wemos D1 Mini. Uh, we'll just leave everything as uh, default. Uh, flash size, this has a four meg. I'll just leave it all hunky-dory. Port 11, let's go. Here we go. Compiling sketch. Could take a little bit because it's got lots of stuff to install. It's got all the Wi-Fi stack and the whole kit and caboodle. So uh, that's to be expected. Archiving, build, uh, built core, sketch users, uh, 22, 222K, 21% of the program space for a lead flasher because it's got all of the Wi-Fi stack. Hey! Blinky! Blinky! It works! Woohoo! That's how easy it is to program an ESP8266 in Arduino. Piece of cake. And if you just go back and look at the examples here, just look at all these different examples DNS service stuff, um, EEPROM uh, stuff, and we've got the regular blink with what we did, RTC, uh, and you can make it into an AVR ISP programmer, so you don't need to buy an AVR ISP programmer, HTTP clients, update, updates, HTTP, update server, MDNS, I have no idea what half this stuff is, but it's awesome, uh, your own web servers, there's a hello server, all your Wi-Fi uh, stuff, client, multi-scanning, Ah, oh, Ethernet, uh, advanced chat server, barometric pressure, web server, <laughs> like all these example files. This is absolutely brilliant. Um, if you want to do some encryption hash stuff, I guess, um, as I said, the SD card stuff, you want to hook up an SD card to this piece of cake, um, serial, that touchscreen stuff, just brilliant. Um, thank you to everyone who's written all these examples and built this entire core. It just makes it so easy. So let's demo the Wi-Fi features of this thing, shall we? And by connecting to my uh, YouTube channel to actually get my subscriber and view count uh, from this thing. So we can, somebody's written that, of course. You don't have to write it from scratch. So uh, thank you very much, Witness Me Now, who's written this Arduino YouTube API. Uh, it's just on the GitHub here, and we should be able to get out our subscriber and view count and stuff like that and connect. It's a good example that it's got to connect to the Wi-Fi, connect uh, through, and so we can just uh, simply download the zip for that, and we can install that one too. Fantastic. Let's go. So what we do is we simply go over to uh, Sketch here, include library, and add a zipper library. Like I said, you don't have to unzip these things, which is fantastic. And we select the Arduino YouTube API master. We open that, and that, oh, yep, yeah, it's done. Library added. 
Beauty. So now if we go back to our examples, we should have right down here examples from custom libraries. This is great. This is what I love about the Arduino environment. It's now so polished that these things are so trivial to install and get running for, you know, some idiot like me to actually do it. Channel statistics with Wi-Fi manager. I don't think I need the Wi-Fi manager, but here it is. We've opened it up. Let's shut down the other window there. And uh, that is all the code we need for actually connecting uh, to the uh, connecting to well connecting to Wi-Fi the all the uh, stuff we installed before for the ESP8266 all handles all that but uh, this is all we need to connect so I need to get my uh, API key and I need to get my channel ID I won't show you those and my Wi-Fi uh, SSID and Wi-Fi password and it should just connect let's try it all right, so let's give this a bell. Once, uh, first of all, we need to um, open the serial monitor here. If it ever pops up, there we go. We've got our serial monitor. Uh, that's COM11. And it looks like it's 115K board here. So we need to select that. And we're good to go. Let's actually download this. I've put in all my credentials up the top with my API key and stuff like that. My YouTube channel ID and... Wi-Fi password, so let's, uh, oh, error compiling. Oh, Arduino JSON. Oops. Yep, sorry, I forgot about that. Uh, so we go to the uh, Arduino JSON uh, GitHub here. Thank you very much, B. Blanchon. Um, so we'll download that and we'll install that once again, just like we did for the uh, previous YouTube API. Easy. So we'll add the zip library again, JSON master. It is now library added to your libraries, and we should now be able to compile that again. And could take a while, once again, because it's got to compile a huge stack and everything else. But uh, there's not much code in here. As you can see, like to connect to YouTube and get your stats, it's pretty easy. Someone's done all the hard work for us. Beauty. We're using 27% of our uh, program space, 40%, 47% uh, of our memory, um, so it's still all right. Oops, mem failed. No, nope, something went wrong. Wah, 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 wah. So what I did is just uh, rebuilt that. We'll try it again. I just went up there and uh, simply re-verify compiled. Done compiling. Okay. Okay, so yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe I didn't install the uh, library, give it enough time. I don't know, something like that. Anyway, let's see if we can uh, download, shall we? So it compiles okay, so the problem is actually programming the thing. I'm not sure why. This is looking good. Ta-da! We're in like Flynn. We've got some garbage come up, but... Those dots, yay! Wi-Fi connected! There you go! It could take a while to connect to the YouTube uh, API, but uh, you can see it obviously connects to the Wi-Fi, which is fantastic. So the compile worked, all the stack worked, everything else is connected to the internet. And bingo, it just took a bit. I'm not sure why it took uh, so long to pop up, but there it is. Stats, subscribe account, yep. Fantastic. That's all there is to program with the ESP8266. Even doing something, to me, that's really complicated because I'm not into the web programming, you know, side of things. I can program embedded stuff, all right, but all this, you know, internet connected and JSON stuff and everything else, I, I'm clueless about. But, hey, people have done all these examples. I can work from the examples and compile these. That's how easy... It is. So I hope you found that interesting and useful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and as always, discuss it down below. Catch you next time.